Hey guys, welcome back to Late Night MMA Radio. I'm your host, Mark Anderson. Let's bring in Dustin Phillips. You there, man? Yes, sir. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So, uh, heard you had a weigh-in yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Weigh-ins uh, usually the funnest part of the whole fight. <laughs> For sure. I mean that in a complete, completely, completely sarcastic manner. Uh, yeah, my weigh-ins are, uh, that's, that's, that's my toughest battle right there. And how much weight so, do you have to cut to make it all the way down to featherweight? Uh, you know, this this one was kind of a unique. Usually I, I try to do about 25, 30 pounds. I walk around between 170 and 175, but I've been off this whole last year. I had three knee surgeries. Oh, wow, um, man. Trying to get my, yeah, my knee fixed. and uh, So my weight got pretty heavy. I was in January before I got cleared by the doctor. I was a little under. 200 pounds. Wow. So, yeah, it's, um, it, the weirdest thing is it's been the easiest weight cut just because I got with this nutritionist and he got me February 2nd is when on my first day back in the gym, I got to train and we started dieting then. Started doing my camp in February, dieting, training, uh, just doing, going through everything just to get my weight down just so I could be ready by the summer. Oh, that's so, crazy, man. A, yeah, it was a long process, but, you know, I, I owe a lot to that, my nutritionist. He's done a, done a fantastic job. I woke up yesterday morning. I was only two and a half pounds over. So do you have any special techniques for dropping the weight? Uh, yeah, usually, um, I, you know, I wake up in the morning, uh, depending on what I weigh. Uh, it was kind of backwards this time, but usually I'll... Uh, try to get like on the elliptical and just get like a 10 minute hard kind of like uh, movement in, almost simulate like a run without actually taxing my legs just okay. to break a sweat. And sure. then I walk, then I just walk on the treadmill uh, for, you know, 30, 40 minutes. So, you know, I just really can't walk anymore. And then whatever's left, I go sit in the sauna. Awesome, man. <laughs> but the, yeah, this weekend was a little backwards. I uh, I forgot my plastics when we got to the gym, so I had to go do the sauna first while my coaches uh, ran and got my plastics from the hotel. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's uh, it was entertaining <laughs> to say the least. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Alan Gibson. Um, what does he bring to the table? You know, to be honest, I, I don't know much. I wasn't able to get a whole lot of information on the guy. Um, from what I do understand, I think he's a gypsy uh, guy, you know, off of his back. Uh, I caught a couple glimpses. They were real bad footage um, on his, uh, his last couple fights. Um, I really wasn't able to see much. They were quick. I mean, in his, I guess in his favor, they were quick for him. He got, you know, that from what I've seen, submission guy, which for me is great because, you know, I'm a wrestler, grappler, so, and I've been training under Robert Drysdale for four years now. Sure. So, I, you know, I'm fine there, and then, you know, training with Sean for so long, I just kind of de- developed a chin and a, a stand-up game, and, you know, just always that motto, be ready for war. So I end up always getting into some kind of slugfest. Now, uh, speaking of Tompkins, are you still with uh, Extreme Couture? Uh, no, it's uh, and nothing bad. I just, um, when I was going through my knee, knee deal and stuff like that, I just wasn't at, you know, obviously I couldn't be at the gym and everything like that. And just whatever reason, a real close friend of mine, is his cousin owns Alliance Gym in San Diego. Okay. And... Yeah, and I just, you know, when my knee, I couldn't train or anything like that. I just happened to go out with them. Uh, he had to go out there for a weekend. And I went out there, and I met some of the guys on the team. And I, I got to talking to uh, the coach, head coach Eric Del Foro, and they happened to be coming up in February to do the Ultimate Fighter, and they were going to be here for four months. And uh, so I ended up just getting hooked up with them. And, you know, like I said, nothing to get extreme couture or any of the, you know, anybody like that. Just, you know, I come from, uh, you know, I was born and raised in Kansas. So Vegas is really hard for me to uh, not 
nothing bad about the people, just the desert and everything like that. It's real hard for me just to be around. So right. I just kind of kind of was ready to get out of Vegas. Great for training, sure. great training, and stuff like that. It just me mentally, it was just kind of weighing on me. Just it just I didn't feel at home or anything like that. So hooking up with the, the Alliance guys was uh, was great for me. And the other thing is they have a lot of guys my size. Like at Couture's, I was one of the smallest guys by far. Right. So this, this at Alliance, you know, they have great, obviously top 35 in the world. And then, uh, you know, like Ross Pearson at 145. And they just have a handful of great guys for me to train with that can push me every day. Not saying it that Couture's didn't, but... More or less, I was getting my butt kicked at Couture's every day because I'm the right. smallest guy. Now, as of late, yeah. it seems like a lot of people have been leaving Couture's. Yeah, you know, like, I, I can't make any comments on that. Um, they've always been nice to me. And so, it just like I said, that my situation was just a little different. Uh, sure. My situation didn't have anything to do with fighting. It just had to do with the lifestyle and, and the desert of Vegas. And you can't go wrong with so, San Diego. No, oh my God, you know, like <laughs> me, I, you know, I come from the country. I just, you know, grew up in a small town. Like seeing the beach, the ocean, and everything like that, I was like blown away. I was like, oh my God. Now hey, I know like, surfers love this so much. Yeah, for sure. So uh, let's get back to Alan uh, Gibson here. Um, just talk about your keys to victory. You know, um, I've been working with a pretty good striking coach, and, uh, you know, my I have very, very good wrestling, so, you know, my keys to victory is just to kind of dictate where the fight goes myself. Uh, thing is, like Mark Hominick once said it best, uh, you know, you want to win a fight, you want to fight the right fight, you got to go out there and fight your fight, not worry about what the other guy's going to do. And, you know, I think everybody as a fighter at one point or another has worried about what the opponent's going to do, and it's always been, you know, a bad fight. So that's what I don't even, to be honest, uh, I know I keep detracting away from the, the question, but I'm just not even worried. I'm just trying not to even think about him or what he's going to do or care what he's going to do. Sure. I'm just going out there to fight my fight, do what I need to do, and not even not even think or worry about it. Now, when I'm uh, breaking down this fight, obviously the first thing that jumps out is the experience factor for you. Um, just talk about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, you know, I just uh, got started and uh, just, you know, I love fighting. You know, I just always was told, you know, you try to get five or six fights in a year. And, you know, my goal was always to make the UFC. So in my mind, I thought the more I fought, the more my name got out and, you know, and I, every time I go into the cage, I think I've learned the most from my six losses. Um, but, you know, when I win, everything like that, I, I just jump right back into training. And that's what I've always been told. You know, the more you fight, the more you get your name out there. And, you know, that's ended up how I got the experience I had. Okay, right, man. So we touched a little bit about some of the guys you've been training with. Who will be in your corner? Um, I got uh, two of the guys coming down from uh, Alliance. They flew into St. Louis. Um, you know, they're not um, big names uh, coming up. And then um, my striking coach, who I worked with out in, in Las Vegas, uh, Eddie Bracco, um, he used to be a Muay Thai fighter. Um, he, he started working with me probably in December when I could, you know, I was able to move around with my, with my legs and stuff like that. Um, and me and him just it just really bonded really well, you know, just personality. So, and then the alliance that uh, you know Eric Ofer and those guys they seem to like you know my chemistry with him. So, and I still live in Vegas. I still have a house. So, you know, when I'm not with them, I train with Eddie. So, you know, I, I like to stick with uh, the guys that stick with me. And Eddie's done a great job. So that'll be the main guy around right my corner. Unfortunately, Robert. Uh, wasn't able to drive, but wasn't able to come make it, but that's sure. usually the guy that's always in my corner as well. Okay, so let's look back a little bit in your career. Back in 2009, you had a fight uh, in Bellator. Um, you've mentioned, obviously, getting to the UFC it would be a career highlight. Um, any interest in making it back to Bellator? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. 
Um, not, nothing against Bellator, but, um, you know, I, I graduated uh, with my political science, criminal justice degree, and, you know, I was pretty long. I'm pretty good at reading uh, contracts, and okay. nothing against Bellator. If you're a younger guy, Bellator is a great thing for you, but the contract locked you in for so long. Really? It's not the place you want to yeah, it's not the it's not the place you want to go if uh, you're looking to move on to another promotion. Very uh, interesting. One of my closest friends and my main training partners is the 155 pound champ, Mike Chandler, who's a beast. Right. And uh, I think that's one of the best 155ers in the world, hands down. And uh, you know, like I said, I don't have anything negative to say about Bellator. I'm 33. I'm not in my 20s. Sure. It's too be hard for me and. The tournament format, I have to cut a lot of weight. It just, that whole structure doesn't work for me very well. Yeah, that'd be a rough few months for you, wouldn't it? Oh, God, yeah. Like, um, Jay Ron, when I was training with him, great guy. Sure. Tour, uh, that's what he said. He's like, I would never do it again. Because, you know, he's, at, he's quite a few years older than me, and said that tournament was rough. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Now, heading into this interview, I was going to ask this question. You touched on it a little bit, but uh, talk about some of the worst injuries you've had in your MMA career. Uh, well, the main injury that I've really had is, main in, injury in general has been my knee, uh, which wasn't even fight-related. It was, uh, I happened to be teaching a, a MMA class for LA Boxing, and one of the manager came up, was just kidding around, who happens to be like 250-pound guy, joking around, came up from behind to try to tackle me and blew my knee out. Oh, jeez, dude. That's rough. So, yeah, I tore my meniscus, and then uh, they went in, and they, they ended up a couple weeks later cutting my meniscus out. And then it still, after six weeks, wasn't working, you know, it wasn't healing the way I expected. They did another MRI, found out I tweaked my ACL, so I had to do that. And then in January, I had to go get the scar tissue that built up around, cleaned out. So it was a long year. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that's really been my only, uh, other than, you know, nicks and bruises here and there. That was really my biggest and only injury, thank God. Knock on wood. Okay, man, so uh, wrapping this up here, this show uh, that you're on today, um, just talk about it. There's quite a few big names on it. Oh, yeah, it's one of those shows, uh, you know, I, when I got the call a few months ago, I thought it was just going to be a small show because it's about two and a half hours from my hometown where I grew up in Kansas. So, uh, oh, you know, I just cool. thought they were putting me in. Yeah, I just thought I was going to be on, you know, a smaller sh pro show that because, you know, I was within traveling distance of my hometown, so people would come see, and then, you know, I don't pay attention to anything, really, anything else, and then all of a sudden, you know, on Facebook, I started getting all these, this stuff on Facebook, and started seeing the right. card, like, slowly grow, and I was like, oh my God, this is going to be an exciting card, I'm, I'm glad, I hope I fight first, just so I can watch the rest of the fight. Right, right. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So, uh, any sponsors you'd like to throw out or promote your Twitter or Facebook? Yeah, I, I would, but uh, my my fight shorts and my, my shirts and stuff still haven't arrived, so I don't even know who my oh, sponsors geez. are. <laughs> well, hopefully so you I, get I'm it just soon. Trying to, yeah, I'm just trying to sit here kind of calm. I'm like, I'm going to go get a run in, just not think about it. they, they got to make it. they got to be here. Right. I think so far, everything for this fight, this this last couple of days has been kind of a mess, so I've just been trying not to think about it. Right. Oh, yeah, man. Um, yeah, so, uh, do you have a Twitter? Uh, yeah, I do. It's uh, Pain Train 145 Okay, cool. Well, we appreciate you taking the time, and best of luck in the fight tonight. All right, thank you, man. I appreciate you all calling me. Okay, have a good one. All right, thank you, sir. Yep, yeah, bye.